Welcome to the stage. Nadia Ben Sheikha, Information Security Analyst at Societe Generale Algérie. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for this event and for giving me the opportunity to talk about a recent approach that's not widely used uh, by companies, which is threat modeling web applications. But before that, allow me to speak shortly about myself and my working experience. Well, my, yeah. My name is Nadia Ben Sheikha. I am currently working uh, as information security analyst within Societe Generale Algeria. I accumulated four years of professional experience in information security in both telecommunication and banking areas, where I had the opportunity to uh, practice several security activities, such as forensics, secure code review, penetration testing, uh, managing security solutions, and many more. Um, actually, I'm working uh, or I'm oriented web application security because one of my main responsibilities is to protect web applications before launching them and by often performing a code review. And by reading many articles about it, I noticed that security experts always point out to the importance of threat modeling and the fact that is usually skipped by many of us. Knowing that it is, uh, um, knowing that it is considered as preventive measure for dealing with security flaws. So um, to give you a quick idea before going deeper into details, Let's start by analyzing the displayed figure. Oops. Next slide, please. Yeah, this one shows a very popular proverb. Stitch in time saves nine. I don't know if this one is familiar to you or not, but actually we find it in many cultures. In ours, we say, The idea behind it, that if you sort out problem immediately, it may save extra work later. In other words, being proactive in preparing for the future will save time, money, and energy. Uh, this proverb makes perfect parallel when related to information security, because when you create software, you will face multiple security issues in different phases of its life cycle, such as um, security design flows, security coding bugs, security configuration errors. So the purpose here is to reduce risk, and to do so, you need to start by what we call threat modeling. So what is threat modeling? When should we start threat modeling? And why should we adopt such an approach when building an application? And finally, what is the methodology to follow when this approach has been adopted? So uh, to begin, let's start by um, defining threat modeling. So threat modeling is process that improves software security. Okay? How? Well, actually, it's done in two phases, identifying threats and mitigating design issues. Um, let me just point out that threat modeling is not an approach for reviewing code or exploiting vulnerabilities or finding attackers. So we need to make clear not to confuse between these approaches uh, before we continue. Uh, okay. When you create a software, you have to respect SDLC process, right? Uh, that is composed of six phases, requirement, design, development, testing, deployment, and maintaining. As I said in my previous definition of threat modeling, uh, we have to identify and mitigate design issues. That's why we have to perform threat modeling at the design phase of SDLC process. So once there is a sufficient understanding of the basic structure of the system, we can start threat modeling to avoid wasting time or doing works as structure changes. Um, of course, we have several applications that are already built and where threat modeling was not performed. In this case, we can do threat modeling at the test phase, but obviously it's better to do it at the beginning, I mean at the design phase. Uh, perhaps you will say that we do code review or penetration testing 
before putting our solutions into production. So we don't see why we have to start by threat modeling. My answer to this question is, are you sure that code review or penetration testing are enough to find threats? No, they are not, because there are many defects are not found with code review or penetration testing. Um, there are other important reasons for threat modeling. Among these reasons, it will help you to understand in details your system, plus gaining time and cost to identify and mitigate threats in time. Previous? No. Previous one. So? No. So? Michael Howard, software security expert from Microsoft, said that threat modeling can find 50% of uh, security flaws because this approach can discover uh, different threats than those found with code review. Um, also, IBM published a statistic about... Uh, next slide, please. Also, IBM published a statistic about time consuming to mitigate threats. They said that it cost 15 times to mitigate um, security flaws identified in the test phase than in the design phase. And it cost 100 times to uh, mitigate deployed application. Uh, you have to know that threat modeling is not processed done by one person or two. So in order to achieve the threat modeling goals, you have to include the right people and anyone who knows about the system. So the most important people to include are people who build the system, like developers, system administrator, network administrator, to explain what is going to be built. Uh, you have to include also people who test the system to check if the recommended security controls are well implemented. Um, it's important also to include people who understand the business goals of the system to, um, in order to um, evaluate the different impacts in terms of availability, confidentiality, and integrity when something goes wrong. Cybersecurity advisors are the leaders in threat modeling because they are at a good position to identify threats and uh, recommend the correct security controls. So how do you proceed to threat modeling a web application? There are four phases. The first one is describe your system. Um, this phase is very important, and skipping it, your threat modeling will lack the foundation and is likely ineffective, because in this phase, you will collect information to understand the business objective of the application and how it interacts with external entities. So try to go deeper into details to understand functional requirements, technical requirements that will allow you to draw diagrams. Uh, start first with functional requirement. Ask about the business objectives of the application, the role of the application, and why it is built. Uh, uh, identify the resources that should be protected and the functionalities of the application. Here, try to draw some use cases of the application. Uh, it's also important to know who uses the application and how it will be used. Will it be used from external or from internal? After that, collect technical requirements. Ask about the entry points of the application, for example, um, front-end interfaces that are exposed to customers, 
uh, ask about external dependencies that communicate with the application, like uh, web server, database, etc. Um, identify trust boundaries, like, for example, um, firewalls, because it is considered a trusted component. It moves data from uh, interested internet to your trusted network. It's also important to figure out the technologies and architecture used to build the application. Um, you have to know then, uh, it's important to, uh, to know the, the current security controls of the application. Here you can use the web application security frame, which is a set of vulnerability categories for web application. It will help you to categorize the, um, the current security uh, controls by areas. After that, and after collecting the necessary information, represent them graphically into uh, diagrams, into data flow diagrams, uh, to show how data moves between different processes and components. Uh, start first by uh, um, an overview of the system, then move on in details to each component. So after uh, decomposing your system and the, the data the data flow diagram is created, uh, start by enumerating uh, the possible threats to each and every component. By using the web application security frame, which is composed of uh, 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 10 categories, it will help you to focus on those areas where uh, mistakes are most often made. Consider uh, threats that would generally impact your system. For example, you have critical web application where an administrator connects to it uh, using just username and password. Here we can identify a weak authentication to the application. Uh, don't forget to think about uh, threats in host, network, and technology itself, because you will find uh, other threats than those already found. Uh, threat modeling is not only finding threats, but also addressing them effectively. Uh, so there are uh, five uh, things you can do to reduce risk. First thing, you can apply standard mitigation. You can find a list of standard mitigation in the internet to uh, how mitigate standard uh, threats. Um, you can develop your custom mitigation, which is a little bit risky, but sometimes is useful. You can transfer the risk. For example, if you find a threat um, is not related to a technology that you are not the owner, so you can transfer the risk. You can also redesign the application to eliminate the, uh, the risk. And if you can do anything of the above, so accept the risk. The last phase, which is document your findings, uh, I think there is nothing better than writing a report containing all the information gathered. So start first by, um, by writing the information gathered in the first step, uh, like, for example, security objectives, um, entry points, external dependencies, trust, uh, trust boundaries, etc. Uh, then start by uh, enumerating all the threats found. No, no. Start by identifying all the threats found respecting uh, the web application security frame. No. Sorry. Yeah. Respecting the web application security frame and how to mitigate each threat. Don't forget to calculate the priority of the threat to know how to prioritize your mitigation. Uh, always remember that the security flaws identifiers are not equals. So start first by with threats with high priority. I want you to keep in mind that threat modeling is becoming essential to uh, protecting your uh, web application. And because uh, it is um, complementary security activities to other security activities like, so, uh, like code review, penetration, testing, uh, because it will be uh, or it is as a guide or map for code reviewer or penetration testing, and even for developers and testers.
So, um, if you want to learn or practice threat modeling, I really recommend the following links. The first one is from Microsoft. It's, uh, uh, it describes threat modeling in web application. The second one also is from Microsoft. It's a book, it's, which is very, very interesting if you want to go deeper into details. And the same author of this, um, of this book made a conference if you want to watch it in YouTube and other uh, important uh, links. Um, I want you to know that um, there are other methods for threat modeling, like uh, kill chain, uh, pasta, straight. And, and why, what I have presented to you uh, today, it's a, a software-centric method. Um, this is the last one. Thank you. Thank you. So.